you know, dominating it doesn't guarantee victory. The last week of the regular season, for some, the last time they'll put on the pads, others trying to breathe life into their playoff chances. The number one team knocked off. Soccer championships awarded. And the Knights of Friendship Collegiate pop into our studio to discuss their chances in the playoffs. Turn the page, it's November. And it's High School Sports Final. Starts now. From News Channel 8, this is High School Sports Final. Hey there, and thanks for joining us for another fantastic Friday edition of High School Sports Final. I'm your host, Monica McNutt. Lots of scores and highlights to get to, as always. So why should we waste any time talking? In Montgomery County, the king of the hill is Northwest. Mark Pierce and EJ Lee have led the offense, but it's the defense that has really been remarkable. Shutouts in five of the eight games this season, and the Jags, they would need to call on their defense again against a hungry Quince Orchard team. The Cougars are no slouchers on offense. Kyle Green and his 1,200 yards rushing. Can Quince Orchard knock off the number one team in the area? Big, big battle in Montgomery County between 7-2 Quince Orchard and 7-1 Northwest. Quince Orchard with the ball. That time the handoff is fumbled and Northwest jumps on it for the recovery. The ensuing Northwest drive as Martin Foray tries to get around the corner, but the Quince Orchard defense is having none of it as they gang tackle him in the backfield. That's a dog pile. I love those. Quince Orchard's up next. Their drive, Martin Viander, Marvin Viander, that is, handoff. He's off to the races, but he gets taken down by the defense after a nice game. Here... Beander again, getting the rock going up the middle, jumping over a teammate for a solid run. Beander again, why not? He has the ball, heads off a tackle, fights his way in for the score. That's a touchdown. You see the guy in the stripes? Here's Northwest with the ball as Mark Pierce drops back the pass. A pretty pass. It lands with Brandon Williams as he lays out to complete that one. Pierce again throws another pretty ball for Jamar Wilson for the touchdown. Cougars win this one 57 to 27. Five and four Flowers visiting six and two Duval in the PG County matchup. Here's Duval with the ball as Kendall Drew, Drew Gregory gets it to the slot. That's Jimmy Williams, though. He's going to gain a few yards on the play. And here is Williams again getting the ball as he has nowhere to run because of Flowers' defense. For Johnny on the spot, they stop him. That's a short gain. All right, so Duval's back in it. Their running back goes over the top. He gets six on that one. Flowers with the ball here as Maurice Wrights gets the handoff and heads off a tackle for a nice game, but he gets tattooed by defensive tackle Devin Rivers for Duval. Tigers improve their record to 7-2 as they knock off Flowers 26-6. Heading over to Greenbelt where Laurel quarterback Michael Hubbard throws this screen pass to Kenyon Panel who gets to the sidelines and heads up the field. Oh, he's going to move, and then he's tackled. I mean, that's the way the game goes, right? All right, here's Hubbard again dropping back to pass. He's sworn by the defense. They're going to get a sack on Hubbard, taking the QB down. All right, Laurel, they have the ball. Hubbard drops back to pass. This time, he finds the wrong guy. He's picked off by Casey Stanton for the Roosevelt defense. The Raiders defense and offense flex their muscles as they shut out Laurel and remain undefeated, improving to 9-0. Time now for our Utility Athlete of the Week. This week, let's head over to Montgomery County. Rockville has had the pleasure of having one of the area's best quarterbacks. Even though he is not the most prototypical size for the position at 5'9 and just 130 pounds, Chuck Reese is the man for the job. Using his speed and his pregame work, Reese has worked himself as that area's top passer. Last week, Reese completed 24 passes for 483 yards and six touchdowns in the Rams' 56-14 win over Wooten. Rockville head coach Seth Kenton, excuse me, acknowledges that Reese's film work allows him to make the right read every time, calling him the perfect QB for our up-tempo offense. The senior leads the area with over 2,900 yards passing and 37 touchdowns. Yes, that's 37. And to boot, he just completed his Eagle Scout project just weeks ago. I was a Girl Scout all the way through high school. So congratulations to Rockville's Chuck Reese for our Utility Athlete of the Week. All right, plenty, plenty. Did I say plenty? Plenty to get to. We've got tons of games coming up. We're just getting started here on High School Sports Final. Up next, our game of the night. Put it, it's a matchup in conference. This game had 14 grabs. Plus, it's title time for some other area teams. We'll have highlights of some of the champs later on in the show. And of course, don't forget for the latest scores and highlights of future games, you can log on to hssportsfinal.com. Hey, 
doing? My name is Ted Daly, the owner of the Silver Spring Gladiators. You are watching High School Sports Final on News Channel 8. That was a look at some of the latest ranking. That's going to take us to our game of the night. Welcome back to High School Sports Final. We've got a matchup between Blake and Seneca Valley, and it would turn into a mismatch. The full moon is out in full force, and a nice night for some football at Seneca Valley. They are hosting Blake. All right, here's the action. Quarterback Zach Robinson fakes one way and rolls out the other way as he finds Dwayne Kelly, who gets in for the score. Blake with the ball as Jake Silverman is under pressure, ducks out of it, and he's able to get the pass off to Redwin Cisse for some positive yards. So we got a little bit of gain there. All right, here we go. Eagles going to beat the Bengal Tigers. They go on and take care of this one, 53 to 0, improving to 8 and 2 on the season. So we got the word from our good friends at Eastern High School that the Ramblers have enjoyed one of the better years in recent history, and they wondered why we haven't been around there to check them out. So thanks for shouting me out on Twitter. I went and personally shot this one. Jerome Johnson is a dual threat with his arms and legs, including six touchdowns against Bell. And Dewan Green not only is a beast on the basketball court, but Green is catching everything in sight. With a win, Eastern will lock up a playoff spot, and they host a first-round game. So what would they do? Eastern, way to use Twitter. Get me out to the game. Here we go. Derek Bowman is going to get the handoff here. But his legs are a little bit too fast for his body, and he's going to forget the football. And the other team picks it up. All right. Phelps now in possession. Phelps has the ball. The drive is they're going to – their fullback tries to find some room, and he runs into my dog pile. That's my favorite thing. But the ball's not dead. Look at that. Javon Belt from Eastern gets on his horse. He takes off. But a great hustle play by Harper to bring him down. All right, so Eastern at about the 35-yard line. They're approaching the red zone on the ensuing possession. Harper is going to drop back, avoid a couple of tackles. Then he's going to roll out. But he overthrows his intended receiver, and now Phelps has the ball back. They take it in and get nice field position. Eastern, though they win, they take out Phelps 39-0. to zero. Lake Vernon hosting Lee. Lee and their quarterback, Walker been able. He is good and able. He's going to drop back and pass. Jonathan Walters would catch that pass and take it to the house, folks. That is a score. Look at him go, number one. Lee, they will put up a good fight in this game, but Lake Braddock gets the better of this matchup, and they win 47-20. to 20. 
We've got more to come on High School Sports Final, including our play of the week. As the football season winds down, you get to see some crazy plays, and it's no different this week. Plus, we'll have members from the football team at Friendship Collegiate in studio. And of course, you have a chance to show us who has the most energetic and spirited high school. Log on to WJLA.com slash spirit and tell us why your school is the best. They couldn't get any bleaker. He kept that news and I kept feeling weaker. So I said, Mr. Jackson, what do I do? You might as well sing about them bad news. The WCAC title game in soccer, O'Connell and DeMatha, the Stags putting the pressure on indeed. But check out the way that they save the ball here. Michael Hurley is going to get in on the action. Hold on, I kind of previewed it for you, a little foreshadowing. There's going to be a save there. <laughs> the Knights, they strike off a set piece, but look out. Okay, there's the save. All right, here we go. The set piece, the lookout, the own goal by the Stags, O'Connell, and they have the early lead. But it was a showcase for the G. Lynn brothers. Senior James gets a goal, and then freshman Justin adds the game winner in overtime, and DeMatha wins their fourth conference title in the last five years. It's a dynasty. 2-1 Stags. <laughs> You know, dominating it doesn't guarantee victory. You, you still have to find a little spark. The Gielan brothers did it. It's an amazing story as a senior and a freshman. We took the championship together in, in sudden death overtime. It's, uh, it's Hollywood stuff, really. All right, then last Saturday, it was the Bell Griffins taking on Theodore Roosevelt Rough Riders for the DCIAA championship. Bell with the corner kick, and Roosevelt attempts to clear the ball, and Bell is going to get some control of it and attempt an on goal is made, but it's just a bit high and stills over the goal. Bell goes on to win the DCIAA title over Roosevelt by a score of 3-2. to two. Congratulations. All right, earlier in the show, we showed you what Quince Orchard did last Saturday, but if you haven't gotten your fill of the Cougars, check out what they did tonight against Wooten. The fans are out in Gaithersburg tonight as they came to see QO host Wooten. Right to the action. Carson Knight keeps this one himself. He gets up to the edge, picks up a block before getting knocked down after the Knights game. And here's Carson again filling himself, but this time a little play action bootleg as he finds Greg Williams open in the end zone. That's a score, ladies and gentlemen. 
Fulton put up a good fight, but Quinn's Orchard, their defense was stingy. Quinn's Orchard finishes the season 9-1 and one as the Cougars win it, 42-14. to 14. Here's Georgetown Prep. They've got the ball. Running back is going to burst through the middle for some positive yard gain. Uh, Prep is taking on bullets in this one. The Little Roy is on the move here as quarterback Ben Strittmatter rolls out and completes that pass to Austin Cruddy. He lays out to catch that one. Bullets with the ball now as Devontae Williams gets the hands off and heads up the middle. He's going to turn on those Jets. Look at him go. Just as he runs around, Little Roy is on his way into the end zone, leaving everybody in his tracks. Hey, hey, there's going to be some people watching the game. Hi, guys. Are you enjoying yourself? Looks like it. All right, prep now. They are going to have the football. And here, Dage Davis goes in for the score. Bullis, your IAC, IAC champs for 2014. They win this one 34 to 26. Centerville and Robinson. C-H-S. Centerville. Woo. All right, here we go. Opening kickoff. Centerville is going to return this one. Okay, they kicked it to the 20. It gets returned nearly to the 20. My math skills are sort of shaky, but that was that, like 60, 60 yards covered-ish? Good for him. They're going to keep this one. We'll keep these highlights short and sweet, though. Centerville blows out Robertson 55 to 14. Patriots rocking the white. Battlefield's in the purple in this matchup. Patriot quarterback Nick Matthews, or this, excuse me, not the quarterback, Nick Matthews picks up the ball on the hop for the return. He's going to get a good game, finding some yards on the outside on the lanes there. All right, fourth down, though. The Patriots facing the fourth down. Cody Agnew will drop back and find Nick Matthews again so they get the first down. Patriots had their back against the wall all night. Another fourth down. Patriot moving the ball, this time with a handoff using the ground game. Jake Caparella gets in for another first down. We're just going to stay on the Patriots side here. You guessed it, fourth down again. This time, they fail to get in the end zone because the quarterback, Cody Agnew, steps out of bounds on his way there. Believe it or not, the surprise here, Battlefield wins this one 28 to 13. All right, Whew, my, I'm just, my throat, I'm tired, I'm having fun. Still more ahead as we wrap up this edition of High School Sports Final. Here's more scores from the Friday night scoreboard. Oh. oh man, I don't know. it's fine. It's all good. All right, we get mic'd up, gentlemen. So we got Jay and Corvez, right? Corvez. Be easy. Yes. Okay.
Remember, you can go to our Facebook page at High School Sports Final to select your choice for play of the week. We've got a couple pulled out for you, though. Phelps versus Eastern. Phelps with the ball as the running back is stood up, and the ball is going to pop out of this melee. Javion Belt for Eastern picks it up, and he is moving, taking it the other way. Great hustle play from him. I think that should be a play, a play of the day. I was like, wait, is the ball actually coming? All right, we've got one more for you. We'll go over to Bullis in Georgetown Prep. Bullis with the ball as Devontae Williams gets the handoff, heads up the middle, turns on those Jets. He is going to outrun all of the little Hoyas on his way to the end zone. All right, welcome back into High School Sports Final. We're joined by the men of Friendship Collegiate High School football team. Hey, fellas. How you doing? How you doing? We've got cool. Jay Corvez and Coach Hunter. Thanks for joining me. I know you guys had a game tonight. Yes. How, how did that go? Oh, we went pretty well. Uh, we just won, I believe, 33-13 to 13 or 33-6. to 33-14. Who was that against? Uh, Silver Oak Academy. Okay. All right. So, Coach, your fellas are confident. Were you pleased with what you saw tonight, despite uh, even uh, though they got the W? Uh, it was homecoming, and, and it was, you know, a good win for us. We needed it. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Last week, you guys were on the road yeah. up yes. in New York. How was that trip? Um, it was pretty tough, you know. Uh, we didn't get a, come away with a W. However, you know, it was a good learning experience. Okay. All right, so before these gentlemen came on set, just to make sure this conversation flows, we had yeah. some talking points for tonight, right? Yeah. So I asked these fellas, what has been the key to success so far? Jay, what's your answer? Um, for me, just being well-rounded, you know, trying to get better in every day, you know, no matter what it is, you know, just you know, just getting up earlier or just, you know, being able to have more time to study. All right, Quavez, what you got? Well, I said sort of same thing. I said a well, well-rounded student, athlete. Like, I put the emphasis on the student because you had to – Focus on your grades in school most of the time. Coach, have you beat this into them? What I mean, uh, happened? You told them. We try to emphasize a lot of things about being well-rounded, and that's one of the missions of our school uh, is to create well-rounded citizens. All right, good stuff. So that's, that's a solid answer. I think being well-rounded will give you success further than football, so that's a good one. All right, what is the game circled on the calendar, fellas, whether it's been played already or you're still looking forward to it? What was the game circled on the calendar? Um, for me, the Gilman game was, you know, the game circled on the calendar. Um, that was a really important game. You know, last last year we uh, scrimmaged them um, pretty much tied. And then this year, um, we didn't get the chance to come up with the W. Mm -hmm. However, it was a really tough game. We fought to the end, you know. It was a good experience. All right. Juarez Gilman for you? No, I'm actually looking forward to our first playoff game against either St. John's or Gonzaga. Okay. So it's between whichever who, whoever wins this weekend. So I'm really looking forward to That's that. That's the city title game, right? Uh, with, with the DC, no, oh, that's the DC IAA. I always mess that one up, right, Coach? That's the new format. DCSAA. DC, yeah. There you go, DCSAA. I'm learning too, y'all. All right, Coach, what you got circling the calendar? Uh, I try to treat all the games. Oh, the same. Coach, come uh, on, man. come <laughs> on. Uh, you know, I can't really look past any opponent. You know, I have to try to get the team prepared as best possible uh, each week. Good. That was excellent leadership. I got a good coach. Yeah. All right, here we go. All right, play on the team that works the hardest, fellas. Um, for me, it's a tie between um, Devin Smith and okay. Dietrich Marsh. Shout out to you, Devin and Dietrich, for working hard. You carry on. <laughs> um, but yeah, those two just, you know, come out and just, they're young um, juniors, but they just come out and work hard every day. You know, I see them in our lunch. We watch film together in lunch while eating. So, I mean, just every day, just that time and effort. Good stuff. Quarters, what you got? Uh, I actually got a really young guy, Vincent Abney, you call him Bully. He's actually a sophomore, and he's, he's always telling everybody, like, what to do, how to do it, and, like, stuff like that. And he keeps everybody on track about what they have to do. All right, Coach? Uh, you know, I'm going to say the cliche, but I think <laughs> I think all the guys work hard on the team. Uh, that's something we emphasize. We have a year-round program where we're in the off-season lifting weights and doing conditioning, and uh, the majority of our team shows up and works hard every day. All right, so I'm going to throw you guys a little bit of a curveball because I imagine that the answer to number four is the same to number one. Continuing to be a well-rounded player and team is what's going to be the key to success moving forward? Yes, yeah, somewhat. All right, so yeah. then the curveball becomes, what pro or college player are you watching? Who do you pattern your games after? Mm. Come on, you got, come on, you got to be an athlete. You got to think quick. Come uh, on, Corvette, you got it? I'll probably say Trent Richardson. Why? Uh, well, he's an athletic tackle for the uh, Washington Redskins. So I look after him and I try to like mimic what he does a little, but not a lot because I play mostly the inside this year, but less I play tackle. I'm trying to like do some of the same things that he does. Got you, Jay. What you got? You had time um, to think now. Yeah, I'm not up to date with uh, my player, but um, what's his name? 
What team play for? Yeah, uh, Saints. The running back from the Saints. The, the rookie? No. no. I don't know. You Come on. You're yeah. fired. Coach, who do you pattern your coaching style after? Uh, there's a lot of uh, guys out there that I look up to, but uh, Nick Saban is a guy that, you know, I try to read up a lot of things he does. Uh, I like the way he talks about the process. Mm -hmm. um, he really doesn't get into the wins and losses, but you know, trying to develop the process and making sure you're doing the right things on each play. The process. We keep hearing that word with LeBron lately, y'all. Y'all yeah. been checking that out? Yeah. yeah. All right, did you come up with your name? Yeah, Mark Ingram. There, there you name. go. There you we know, go. Just seeing all the tri tribulation he's been through, you know, with his father. and just I'm not up to date with him, but I know he's going to come back. All right, cool. Thanks, gentlemen. Good luck the rest of the way. That's all we have time for in this edition of High School Sports Final. Don't forget, you can catch every single highlight and story that you saw tonight on our webpage, hssportsfinal.com. Until next week, I'm Monica McNutt. Be an athlete. Thank <laughs> you.